If you're currently scoping your app's features, or maybe you've already started development, but you haven't yet figured out how you're gonna get your first 10 users, you are falling behind, my friend. Look, I've seen this way too many times. People go full force on development, but they wait to find their first users until their app is actually finished. Now, this is the fastest way to kill momentum. Instead, you really wanna have your users aligned up and waiting so as soon as your app is ready to launch, you can bring them on board. The problem is just continuing to build your app is generally a lot easier because it only involves you. You don't have to bring other people into the mix. And when you do, when you start that user outreach, it also makes things a lot more real and can add some pressure. So in this video, you're gonna learn the exact steps to take to get your first 10 users or more, but without having to pump the brakes on your development. So there are two keys to making all of this work. The first is to make your early user outreach as easy as possible. And the second is to make sure you're actually addressing the right people because only a certain segment of your broader target market is going to be right to bring onto your MVP app's very first launch. So the very first step is this. You need to separate your ideal first users from your total addressable market or your TAM. Your total addressable market refers to the maximum potential your app will have in terms of reach within the market. Now, one of the ways you can start to think about your market as having different segments is by referencing the book, Crossing the Chasm. So within this book, you'll learn about the technology adoption life cycle. And that's a reference to this bell curve right here, which I'll put up on the screen so that you can see a little bit more closely. But essentially, just because you have found someone who may be the right user for your app, it might not be the right time for them. So right user, wrong time still equals wrong user. And so you can think about separating your TAM into different segments based on timing. For example, in referencing the bell curve within this book, you first have innovators and early adopters who are gonna be the right users for your app when it's your early launch. So the innovators, the early adopters are the right people at the right time when you're very first launching. And then once your app has more validation in terms of the actual working product itself, then you'll move on to the early majority, then you'll move into the late majority, and then you'll move into the laggards. And laggards are people who, again, they're the right user for your app. They are in your target market, but generally it's going to be the wrong time for them until there's more mass adoption of the app. So start to think about how your full market is not necessarily what you're gonna be going to to find your first users. You wanna make sure you're identifying the right people within the broader market. Hey, real quick, if you're finding any of this helpful, then you're gonna to wanna to head to our free extended training next over at coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop. It's gonna guide you by the hand through the next steps you need to take to build, launch, and grow your app. So head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop after you finish this video. So how do you know whether someone is your ideal first user? Well, first and foremost, you wanna make sure they're the right user overall, regardless of timing. So do they know they have the problem that your app solves? Or is it something they're going to need to be educated about first? You want to make sure they already know they have that problem. And are they actively paying to solve that problem? Now, this can mean paying for another app right now, or maybe they're paying for a different type of solution, maybe one that's more manual. And is the problem severe? Is it urgent? Is it something that's causing lots of pain points? And those pain points have consequences. And those consequences come in the forms of wasted time, wasted money, that sort of thing. Assuming those things are all accounted for, you want to start looking for people who aren't totally happy with the current solution they have. Maybe it's even a solution that they've pieced together themselves. Maybe they're using spreadsheets combined with some manual processes, for example, and it's not doing things as efficiently or as effectively as they want. 
Early adopters are also people who will buy into a vision of what your app can become and what your app can enable for them versus just the existing feature set. And this is important because you're getting your first users lined up before you've actually launched your app. So you need to find people who can see that vision and appreciate it and get excited about it. There are also people who are more tech savvy and even beyond that, they really enjoy getting their hands on new tech. So they like experiencing new solutions, new options, and it's something that they just kind of inherently enjoy. All right, so step number two to getting those first users is to do the unscalable. One of the reasons building an app is so enticing is because it is such a scalable business model. It's one to many. But before you can actually scale your app as a whole or your business, you need to do the unscalable when it comes to user outreach. In really simple terms, this just means having conversations with people. And this is opposed to sending really big automated campaigns, whether that be via email or paid ads. It is opposed to casting wide nets as wide as you possibly can early on. So the unscalable is having those individual one-to-one -one early conversations versus going after the vast majority to try to just amplify your efforts. Now this can sound really counterintuitive, but the best way to think about it is to kind of compare it to what you're doing with your actual app itself. So you are launching a minimum viable product first before you build those next version features and the next version and the next version features. And the reason is because you want to bring your early user pool onto the first version app, get the feedback and use that feedback to inform the next version and the next and the next, because doing it this way actually lets you use data to develop the fuller version of your app. That means you're not making assumptions and ultimately wasting time and money. Well, your user outreach should be the exact same. If you try to launch the full scope version of your user outreach right out of the gates, then you're going to be making tons of assumptions in order to do so and ultimately wasting a lot of time and money. Instead, by having these unscalable one-to-one -one early conversations with people, you can get the feedback, the responses, and the input that you need to inform your messaging and your marketing practices thereafter and avoid wasting a lot of time and a lot of money. Step number three builds directly on top of the last. So when you're having those conversations, you need to speak directly to the outcome. The first instinct of most app founders is to just talk about their app itself when they're having conversations with prospective users. But a feature list will never compel someone like an outcome will. For example, let's say you're building a scheduling and invoicing tool for service-based businesses within a certain industry. Well, instead of just talking about the calendar and scheduling features or those invoicing features, you'd want to go a lot deeper than that. You'd want to hit on the pain points involved with the inefficient and ineffective scheduling system they currently have. How much human error is happening because of that? How many clients are they losing because of poor scheduling processes? How is that hurting their business? The same is true for the invoicing. You know, how many invoices are lost or late or just kind of forgotten? How many fall through the cracks and how much money are they losing? Are they actually just burning every single month because of it? And if all of those, those problems and pain points, if they were all gone. How would their business look on the other side of that? What would be different? How much healthier would it be? How would their stress levels be because of that healthier business? That's an outcome. And that's how to look at an outcome versus a feature set. The feature set enables the outcome, but it's the outcome that's actually going to compel someone the most. Now, the more you speak to the pain points, the consequences, those ultimate desires that people are after or those outcomes, the more likely they are to want to come on board your app because to them, it's clear that you get it. 
And when they think and, and really know that you do get it, it builds a lot of trust. All right, here's step number four to getting those first users. Make it a numbers game. I see a lot of founders have a few conversations or maybe they'll put up a few posts on social media, but they don't get a response. There's just silence on the other side. And so they think it's not working. The key to getting your first users though is frequency and consistency. And this is the big secret for getting users that all the successful founders have figured out. It's just frequency and consistency. So I want you to set a schedule for when you're going to work on your user outreach. And then I want you to set a goal for how many conversations you're going to have each time. And then I want you to set a time period for how long you're going to do that consistently. So for example, maybe for a six week period, you're going to work on your user outreach every single day. And each day you're going to have three conversations. It's really important you do this with your user outreach because this frequency and this consistency will actually give you the data you need to see what's working and what's not, and then to trim the fat, so to speak, and double down on what is working. But if you only have a few conversations or put up a few social posts and then think that it's not working, you really just don't have enough data to make any smart decisions thereafter. So here's step number five for getting those first users. And again, this one builds directly on the last, but you need to track your user outreach and iterate as you go. Remember that the evolution of your user outreach is not all that different from the evolution of your app. You need to see what's working as you go and then iterate based on what is or isn't working. Now, the only way to objectively track this is to actually have enough conversations to where you can pull trends from the data. So have your first 10 conversations. And even if you don't see immediate results in these conversations, have all 10 anyways. And then on the other side, review and analyze them. See what worked, what didn't work. Did certain language resonate? Did certain language not really resonate? Should you have ended conversations differently or maybe scheduled follow-ups or maybe just followed up differently? You know, really analyze these and see where were the weak points and where were the strong points. Then when you have your next 10 conversations, you can intentionally make changes based on your analysis of your previous 10 conversations. And that should continue again and again and again. The reality is what gets measured gets managed and your user outreach should not be left up to chance. So make sure you're tracking and iterating as you go through it so that you're not left with a disappointing launch on the other side. All right, I hope this helps you get those first users before you even launch. And if you did find this helpful, then the content you're about to see on the screen is gonna help you take it even further.